Joining me in studio right now, former Lubbock County Republican chairman and the guy who's in charge of strike forces across America, or at least here in Texas and going over to New Mexico. New Mexico. New Mexico. It's Carl Tepper. Hey, welcome back. Good morning. I like that Jody Arrington interview. Thank you. Uh, it was interesting to hear him talk about. Um, it was good. Yeah, the agreement that you know the, the farmers and and he's a he knows uh, quite a bit about ag and uh, how the farmers are concerned about these uh, awful trade deals. Yeah, um, I know one guy. You and I have a mutual friend. I don't want to give him away. I don't want to get him in trouble. But their their company has a policy of not. They do cotton gins all over the world. They, they do not patent anything because it's not worth the paper they're printed on. Mm. Because uh, the Chinese and Brazilians and everybody else just steal it. Nobody's enforcing these patent laws. Yeah. So there's a lot of things connected to these trade agreements that are terrible. And, uh, and you know, the guy who's brought this to the forefront of discussion has been Mr. Donald J. Trump. See, I thought it was Hillary who brought that. Was it not? You were talking about Donald she Trump. Brought, she, Hillary <laughs> brought up how to, how to give away our trade. Uh, uh, to everybody, so uh, and the TPP and all that. Stuff, you know, when so. when Trump talks about trade, and we're going to get into some Trump issues later, but when he does talk about that, it's something that resonates, and, and especially on those Rust Belt states where he's been campaigning, that is a a, a big big issue, big issue yeah. and uh, it, it really does resonate with a lot of people and, out there. And they've been, you know, they feel like they've been ignored. This was Ted Cruz, and and I salute Ted Cruz for for fine. I have to say, finally coming to Lubbock to talk to the ag community. I haven't heard yet how that went. Uh, but you know, that's the first time he's, um, frankly, we've had to berate him for about three or four years to get him here to do that. And, uh, I'm glad he finally did. That's what he, what a U.S. Senator does. And I'm, I'm glad he's hitting a stride. Uh, let's see, let's talk about the strike force. Let's get into that, uh, real quick because, uh, you are, uh, Leading, I guess, a, a strike force to New yeah, Mexico. You know, th there was a meeting in Austin and they said, hey, I need somebody to help with uh, the strike forces and, uh, you know, who wants to help in New Mexico? And I thought, well, you know, Lubbock is right close to New Mexico. And yep. uh, I think I forgot I wasn't going to be the chairman of the party anymore and <laughs> raised my hand. And I didn't realize <laughs> that this wasn't just, you know, Lubbock County and some some buddies and some college Republicans going over to New Mexico. This is all of Texas. Uh, if you choose to go on a strike force to go to New Mexico, the the Mighty Texas Strike Force was actually a private, kind of a privately funded organization for some years. Uh, some people in Midland were were funding it and doing it. It was really not a Republican Party of Texas, an RPT thing. And then uh, they finally decided to uh, uh, you know put their resources together and work with the RNC, the Republican National Committee, the RPT, and, and get everybody uh, on these strike forces on the same page and, and, and go to where it really counts. And uh, when, when, is this, when is this happening? So the first we have, a, we have by the way, there is a strike force, uh, Mighty Texas Strike Force New Mexico Facebook page. I'll be trying to update that more regularly. Uh, we just announced last night when we're going to be going. Now, you can go any weekend. Uh, starting in September, you can just, if, if you want to call us and we'll make sure you get connected uh, out in New Mexico, you can go. But we are actually concentrating on uh, the first weekend of October, which is actually September, October weekend, you know. Right. And, uh, and then the next weekend after that, which I think is the 6th, 7th, 8th. And then, uh, and then the weekend right before election day, which I think is the fifth and sixth. I should have, I should have opened up my calendar, but it's those three weekends. Now the first two weekends are balloon weekend. That's going to be kind of tough in Albuquerque hmm. to get hotel rooms. So we might be a few miles uh, out of the main corridor. Uh, but we are going to be meeting at the uh, Republican party headquarters, uh, New Mexico Republican party headquarters in Albuquerque. Very cool. And so in, is this open to anybody? It's open to anybody. This this is it. I mean, this is the election, the presidential election. If you if you want to be on a presidential campaign, this is how you do it. Um, you show up. I always tell people you want to be you want to be big in politics. You show up. Uh, this is the type of thing where you drive yourself to Albuquerque and you grab some push cards or you sit down at a phone bank and you start making calls and getting those voters out and getting them riled up to vote for uh, for Donald Trump. We're also doing some down-ballot races. Uh, there's a state Senate race that's, that's uh, in play down there. They're real close to having a majority in their state legislature, the Republicans. 
Uh, there's, uh, there's a, they, but they elect their secretary of state in New Mexico. We don't do that here in Texas. It gets appointed by the governor. There's a very hotly contested secretary of state race. And I think there's a state rep race and a couple of others down ballot. We're hmm. going to be, we're going to be volunteering. Also, uh, our, your, your signal, the calf whale signal is very strong. So, uh, the, you folks in, in Midland and all the way down to El Paso, uh, we're also doing Las Cruces. Uh, so get with us if you want to, if it's a little quicker for you to get down to Las Cruces, we've, we've got a lot of work down there as well. And, uh, it's also a lot of fun. Uh, there's a lot of camaraderie in these strike forces. You make friends for, for a lifetime, you know, and, yeah. and you, you get to say you were there, you participated in the Trump campaign. So, so those who haven't been before, what all do you do? It's a lot of phone banking and block walking. As a matter of fact, we sent a team four years ago from Mitt Romney to Ohio. Yeah. Uh, we court, that was the best coronation we ever did with Congressman Randy Nagabauer. He funded the effort, and it was our volunteers. Uh, Sandra Ziegler has always been the key, you know, strike force person. Uh, Nitra Barnes, uh, Ruth Shermile, a, a lot of our best people went to uh, Ohio and walked blocks during the hurricane. Uh, what was that hurricane? What was that Sandy that was going? Well, I think it was. Yeah. Was that Sandy going yeah. through? And yeah. and uh, of course, the effort turned out short. I think because of that hurricane, in a lot of ways. But uh, they went out to uh, Ohio and they did a lot of block walking and phone banking. Very cool. So yeah. uh, people can get signed up. Uh, you drive yourself. You have a lot of fun and. Try to win in the election. Drive yourself, and I'm sure we're going to have carpooling um, yeah. capability and, and, and those sorts of things. And um, it, it's tough to raise money for these things because there's a lot of federal election campaign laws. So yeah. we were we were looking at doing you know a GoFundMe page, and uh, the Republican Party of Texas has a Mighty Strike Force, Mighty Texas Strike Force page where you can sign up. By the way, that's the best way to go, and you could click New Mexico on the way down. And um, we're trying to figure out ways to make sure it gets to, you know, our effort in New Mexico. But uh, Texas is sending strike forces to Iowa, Colorado, Ohio, uh, I think New York. Uh, I think uh, I think there's actually a Puerto Rico strike force. So, hmm. um, you know, we, that is our capability here in Texas. We're so red that we're able to export some of our assets to some of these neighboring states and, and push it over the line. Yeah, and, and you say we're so red. The uh, There's a poll that was released, uh, KTVT, uh, came out with a poll, uh, I guess just yesterday, that said uh, 46% of likely voters in Texas cast their ballots for uh, Donald Trump, Clinton had the support of 35 percent. I don't know if they actually factored in you know, the, any of the you know Green Party or uh, uh, Libertarian and, and they Party need to. or not. They need to. That's important. I heard you saying on the way in about um, Kansas and Utah yeah. being in play. Uh, frankly, that's fine. Um, I hope the Democratic Party expends a lot of resources in those states because they're going to go red in the end. So I'd like to see them blow their resources in those states and uh, so that we can pick up uh, our swing states for our side. I think Ohio is starting to pull better for Donald Trump. Uh, Pennsylvania is starting to pull better poll better we're still having trouble in florida uh we will have strike forces going there and uh florida is always very hotly contested so there's sure. going to be a lot of activity there 